Hi, I'm Ron Bowman, and I'm a tenure employee of the Wisconsin Central Limited at the shops in North Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I'd like you to join me as we depart for Stevens Point on train number seven from Fond du Lac. While we're en route, we'll take a look back at the rich heritage of this company, where we've been in the last 10 years, and a glimpse of the future. So come on along. The tracks that number seven rides out of North Fond du Lac have a long history. The Wisconsin Central that we know today is not the first WC. The first Wisconsin Central was born in Menasha in 1871 when it was incorporated to build a railroad from Nina to Ashland, Wisconsin. In 1961, what was left of the original Wisconsin Central was merged with two other railroads into the Sioux Line Railroad Company, locally known as the Sioux. To ensure its future, the Sioux Line bought the Milwaukee Road in 1985. The railroad began to shift its traffic to the former Milwaukee Road main line between Chicago and the Twin Cities. The Sioux Line's tracks became primarily feeder lines, many with light traffic and high operating costs. In an attempt to control costs, Sioux took most of these lines and operated them as a separate division known as the Lake States Transportation Division. But the work rule changes and traffic base that Lake States needed to succeed failed to appear. So the Sioux Line slapped a for sale sign on Lake States in January of 1987. The buyer turned out to be a group of investors led by Ed Burkhardt and Tom Power, both former railroad officials. And so it was on October 11, 1987, today's Wisconsin Central Limited was born. Well, it's changed a great deal, but uh, I think the fundamentals are of this business are the same. It's, uh, it's matching uh, employees and, and capital uh, for the a desire to serve the customers and drive the business up. And I hope we never uh, lose that, that prime uh, uh, reason for being. Yes, the company's expanded far beyond what we ever, I think, would have thought out. Uh, we never thought we'd be in the international business. All of these have uh, been nice developments. Well, the first six weeks were the hardest, where there was total confusion in the operation with a, all new people, a new uh, computer system, a lack of data uh, carried forward from the uh, Sioux line. That was a very tough period. We had our hands full uh, that first year. There was no plan beyond that. That first day was kind of tough. I was on the 07 o'clock switch engine at Stevens Point. Uh, the work was railroad work which was nothing new, but uh, what was difficult was the car numbers had been mixed up and we had a real tough time sorting out what we had to do, but got through today okay. The ties and rails stacked at the north end of North Fond du Lac Yard point to one of the obstacles the WC had to overcome, improvements to its physical plant, especially track. Since its inception in 1987, the company has installed more than 1.4 million wood ties and 240 miles of steel rail. The end result can be seen as train number seven takes the switch that leads from the yard to the main line. These tracks represent a fraction of the more than 3,000 miles of steel highway that WC operates in the U.S. and Canada. But unlike the publicly subsidized highways used by the railroad's truck competitors, WC maintains its steel highway at its own cost. The upside? A quality-minded engineering force that maintains the tracks for safe, reliable operation. Ten years ago when I got here, uh, the engineering forces were pretty small. Since then we've increased to there's probably 14 men working on uh, both the FEW and the WC crews in the yard now. Yeah, the yard has expanded. It's almost tripled in size since we started up from ten years ago until now. Track improvements aren't the only thing that reflects Wisconsin Central's progress in the past 10 years. Today's number seven is one of 130 trains operated by WC every day, a far cry from the 36 trains the railroad operated in 1987. That kind of growth demands a steady supply of reliable freight cars to serve the railroad's 8,000 customers. In fact, the number of freight cars in service has jumped from 2,900 in 1987 to more than 13,000 today. 
And many of those cars are maintained here, Wisconsin Central's North Fond du Lac car shops. There's two factors that come in here as, as far as the, uh, the car department and the, and the railroad, the Wisconsin Central. Uh, first of all, we not only support the railroad in uh, maintaining the, uh, the equipment uh, in its day-to-day -day operation, but we also make sure that the customer gets a quality car. Today, the Wisconsin Central is, uh, is looking at uh, every employee as being a, a marketing person, per se. It's, it's come back that uh, cars require and need constant uh, attention and inspections. And I see that as uh, one of the greatest changes. And one thing the Wisconsin Central is, uh, is uh, made it a priority. Uh, the Wisconsin Central started right off with uh, paying attention to every customer on our line, trying to make it convenient for him to use the railroad. And convenient meant giving him the best equipment that we could give him. And that's still what we're doing today. And that's part of the Wisconsin Central success that I see. Refurbished freight cars aren't the only things that flow out of Wisconsin Central's North Fond du Lac car shop. The shops and the nearby freight yard represent a steady source of employment in the Fond du Lac area. And like a stone tossed into a pool, WC employees cause a healthy ripple through the economy of Fond du Lac County and other areas served by the company. We've been delighted to see the kind of economic success that Wisconsin Central has enjoyed because it certainly funnels off, not only in terms of additional jobs, but we have jobs that, that well support families. We have jobs that are using good technical skills of the uh, employees. We have a great workforce here in Wisconsin to work with for Wisconsin Central. We have people who've grown up in the railroad uh, through time that are able to yet find jobs for their, their kids or grandkids are able to find employment in the railroad, and, and that's good. So it's an intricate transportation mode when I started here, I thought I was just lucky to have a job. I thought I'm working for a railroad again. I'm on the ground floor. I thought this was going to be something big, but I never thought it'd be this successful. I always figured it stays pretty much like short line and really not get this, much, this big and this popular as it is now. When it comes to Wisconsin Central operations in Oshkosh, less, as they say, is more. With the purchase of Lake States, the WC inherited a main line built in the middle of Division Street. You've heard a place described as little more than a wide spot in the road? Well, for many years, the main line through Oshkosh was the road. For a good 25 to 30 years, the community of Oshkosh has been wanting to eliminate very distinct safety hazards in that area. There were formerly two different railroad lines and uh, two different sets of tracks and 47 at-grade crossings that were very dangerous. So we were able, through the assistance and working together with Wisconsin Central here at the state level, um, I introduced an amendment in the state budget to provide for a low-interest loan that the railroad companies could compete for and could be applied for increased safety measures on their infrastructure. Oshkosh was one of the first projects that was funded by this uh, new allotment of, of money that was available. It was a project that was long in the making and with a very successful end. Oshkosh isn't the only place where Wisconsin Central demonstrates its commitment to public safety. Every year people are killed or seriously injured in grade crossing crashes. The railroad has responded with an ongoing effort to close little used crossings, to upgrade warning devices, and to build more overpasses. And of course, Wisconsin Central is an active player in the nationwide program known as Operation Lifesaver. Operation Lifesaver is a uh, national program that was started 25 years ago uh, by a gentleman on the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, I think it's a wonderful program. Uh, I, about 100, I average about 150 presentations a year for the Wisconsin Central. In about the eight years I've been uh, in this program, I've seen a, a great change reduction in the uh, accident ratio. Our people don't want to be involved in these accidents either. I mean, it, it's a trauma for one of our engineers to go through this. There's more to this factory at Nina than meets the eye. At first glance, Nina Foundry looks like just another industry, one that happens to make manhole covers. 
but to Wisconsin Central, Nina Foundry is a customer. In the past 10 years, the railroad has achieved a nationally recognized reputation for quality, superior customer service, and market share growth. But hey, don't take our word for it. Well, my experience with Wisconsin Central has been about over the last 14, 15 months since I joined Appleton Papers. And the one thing I can say about the Wisconsin Central that um, really stands out from, I guess, my experience with railroads in the past is that they, basically, they walk the walk, they talk the talk. They are a very quality-oriented railroad, which really just lines up with Appleton Papers' principles about quality and the way we uh, view and uh, you know, work with our customers. The one thing I'll say about the Wisconsin Central, they're responsive. Um, they, can be, they are price competitive. And they're just a refreshing change in railroad industry. Nothing rivals the efficiency of the railroad's basic premise, the concept of steel wheels rolling on steel rails. Take number seven, for example. The right-of-way we're traveling is a mere 15 feet wide, yet it handles millions of tons of freight every year. What's more, trains like number seven haul more tonnage while consuming less fuel than other transportation modes, especially trucks. Wisconsin Central's progress is as sure-footed as train seven's journey to Stevens Point. Employment has risen from 662 at startup to a high of 2,200. In 1996, the railroad handled a total of 464,000 revenue carloads, an increase of 235 percent from 1987. Intermodal facilities that allow truck trailers to be transloaded to rail cars were added at Nina, Stevens Point, and Arcadia, Wisconsin, joining facilities in Chicago. But the company's progress isn't restricted to the original railroad acquired from the Sioux Line in 1987. In 1992, Wisconsin Central's parent company, Wisconsin Central Transportation Corporation, formed a new subsidiary named Fox Valley and Western. A year later, FVW acquired the rail assets of the Fox River Valley and Green Bay and Western Railroads from Itel Rail Corporation. And in January of 1997, another WCTC subsidiary, the Sault Ste. Marie Bridge Company, acquired the rail assets of Union Pacific's Duck Creek North property. Nor was the company limited to expansion in the continental U.S. In September 1993, WCTC acquired about a third stock ownership in New Zealand's national rail system. The railroad, now known as Transrail, operates 2,500 miles of railroad and provides freight rail services as well as passenger, commuter, and ferry service. A Canadian railroad, the Algoma Central Railway joined the WCTC family in 1995. Less than two years later, a consortium led by WCTC acquired ownership of Great Britain's three trainload freight companies and the postal service operations. They operate today as the English, Welsh, and Scottish Railway. And most recently, a consortium led by WCTC won the bid to purchase Australia's Tasmanian Railroad, known as TASRAIL. If you, you go through a, a process like setting up Wisconsin Central, and uh, by 1993, which is when we uh, got involved in Transrail, uh, Wisconsin Central was a, a proven success. It was doing fine. Uh, if you have one su such success in the world of business, you'd like to do it again. Most people don't have two bites at the apple. But uh, we found a way to get repetitive bites at that apple, and uh, it's worked out well. And in the process, we've gotten uh, to know a lot of extremely capable railway people worldwide who have just as good ideas as we have here. And uh, it's been a very uh, enlightening experience. Dusk falls as our train snakes into the east end of Stevens Point Yard, the operating headquarters of Wisconsin Central. For the crew of number seven, the future extends to the prospect of a good night's rest. While they're sleeping, the capable switch crews at Stevens Point will break up number seven's train and sort it into other trains. By tomorrow, many of those cars will be delivered to customers in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota. This is the realization of Wisconsin Central's mission statement, to offer superior transportation consisting of more frequent, dependable train service at competitive prices with proper equipment accomplished by customer-minded employees. It's a goal the company strives to accomplish every day and into the future.
nothing beats with Kenston Central as a uh, as a solid operation. Uh, this is the uh, the crown jewel for us, and the and we uh, we intend to run with Kenston Central very successfully. We've surmounted a lot of problems of growth. I think much of that is behind us now. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in upgrading facilities, uh, uh, fixing track, uh, giving us greater capacity. Now the, uh, the uh, challenge is to, uh, to uh, show the results that we can get from that investment. That means better service to our customers, keeping our costs down, uh, continued good relations with our employees, uh, all of whom are necessary to serve the customer. So uh, we'll be concentrating on that, and uh, again, what happens in terms of uh, uh, additional opportunities, well, uh, we'll see when we get there.